Hey, welcome to the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 26 today, verses 31 to 37. You shall make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet material and fine twisted linen. It shall be made with cherry beam, the work of skillful workmen. You shall hang it on the four pillars of acacia overlaid with gold, their hooks also being of gold, of four sockets of silver. You shall hang up the veil under the clasps and shall bring in the ark and the testimony there within the veil, and the veil shall serve for you as a partition between the holy place and the holy of holies. You shall put the mercy seat on the ark of the testimony in the holy of holies. You shall set the table outside the veil and the lampstand opposite the table on the side of the tabernacle toward the south, and you shall put the table on the north side. You shall make a screen for the doorway of the tent, blue and purple scarlet material, and fine twisted linen, that's what the screen's made out of, the work of a weaver. You shall make five pillars of acacia for the screen and overlay them with gold. Their hooks also shall be of gold, and you shall cast five sockets of bronze for them. So here's some more instruction about the inside of the tabernacle and a division between the most holy place and the holy place. Interesting here, this business about the cherry beam. What is a cherry beam? Cherry beam is one of the varieties of angels. The Bible talks about seraphim, cherry beam, and there's different orders of angels, at least some. And so uh, inside on the tapestries around, inside the sanctuary, uh, and on the, in particular, we're looking at the, the veil between the holy and the most holy place. And also there's a screen between the, mo the holy place and the external, the outdoor part of the sanctuary, the, the screened area we're going to be talking about, the entrance to the sanctuary. Uh, those screens or, or doors or tent divisions have cherry beam on them. And everything inside the holy place has is woven with all these colorful, and then in the cherry beam. So there's representations of angels there all over on the walls and on the ceiling. And so representing, of course, God's angel workmen coming back and forth between heaven and earth. So there's a differentiation here. There's no angel shown on the screen, the doorway into the holy place. But between the holy place and the most holy place, there are angels represented there. Why would there be some in one and why not some at the other? Well, remember, the angels, they work directly for God. They are directly interacting with humans and going and coming on God's commands. Uh, but remember, humans, only, we on, only the high priest went into the most holy place once a year. And the uh, ministry of human priests, they came in through the door and they had to come in through the door. So that's probably why there's no, I infer this, that's why there would be no cherry beam on that door because this is, this is where the humans look in or come in. This is not, the angels work directly, back and forth, boom. God's throne room, boom, to my side, back and forth. But the humans, they do their ministry through the sanctuary system and with the sacrifices and the labor and so on, which we haven't talked about yet. And then they come in and would put some of the blood, minister it into the holy place. So humans go in and out of that door, and I think that's the, the, the idea there, possibly. You can think about it yourself and see what you think. You see this, by the way, for sure, in verse 31 and 36. Compare them. One has cherry beam and one doesn't. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many places or mansions, many locations, uh, many places in the family. If it weren't that way, I would have told you so, John 14. And so uh, it's a human mediation. We want priests to be going in and out of that location to minister the blood, the, the holy place anyway. Uh, one more piece here about the veil between the holy place and the most holy place. And again, I've taken a note uh, because it's so well worded out of one of the commentaries here. It was one long single curtain. Uh, it was one long single curtain. It was not a divided curtain that could be opened easily. To get past it, one would have had to move at least one of the poles in, on either side and go around it because it was not designed to be gotten past under normal conditions. Rather, it provided a barrier past which people could not normally go. The, the, the high priest, the, even the high priest did not randomly go into the most holy place. Once a year he would go in and probably very reluctantly even then because that's where God's presence is. He is not allowed to just randomly go in. He did not go in there and eat lunch. Okay, the, the, the most holy place was off limits and the high priest only could go in once a year, only in his duties. And he was, I'm sure he made that a minimum thing. I'm in, I'm out, I'm doing my faithful business. I'm not looking around, not hanging out here. Uh, God is holy. I am a human priest. I want to do my business and get out because God is holy. And they had a true reverence, a true respect for God. But today, you know, I think if we if it was left up to us, a lot of us would uh, just go in and you know slap his back. Hey, God, here I am. We're just we're just both brothers. Well, we are brothers. We are his brethren. 
but we don't slap God on the back. God is the creator. We are the creatures. He is infinite. We are finite. Let's remember our place. When the angels are in God's presence, they veil their faces. They look down. Uh, remember that. We looked at that already. So let's remember to have a, a true reverence for our God. All right, see you tomorrow morning. Thank you.